Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session on the integration of body-worn cameras with other technologies. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone to please keep your phones or computer audio on mute to avoid background noise. The session is being recorded so others may view it later using our website. If you'd like to ask a question of the panelists, please use the chat function and direct your question to the host. You can send a question at any time throughout the session. Please edit your display name by hovering over your name, clicking more, choosing the rename option, and changing your screen name to reflect your full name, title, and agency. This will help us ensure we mark you down for your grant requirement. After the meeting, there will be an opportunity to evaluate it. Please do provide us your input on this and other sessions as it helps us improve for future events. As a reminder, points of view or opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the official position or policies of the U.S. Department of Justice. Thank you again for joining this afternoon, and I'll turn it over and introduce you to our Body Worn Camera PIP Program Senior Advisor and Retired Public Safety Director, Jeff Smith. Jeff? Thanks, Brittany. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Brittany did a nice introduction. Uh, in a second, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists to let them introduce themselves and briefly go over a little bit about their experience and what they've done with some integration of BWCs with either other systems or things like that. This tends to come up a lot across the board when we're talking about integration, and it can be from what I consider simple integration with one system to crazy new things that all kinds of agencies are doing. And so what we wanted to try to do is talk about a little bit of all of those. I've got a bunch of questions for our fine panelists, uh, but we're really hoping that all of you, as we're going through this, will also have quite a few questions that we can rely on those and try to tailor this a little bit to what questions you may have um, or concerns or things like that. But with that, I'd like to turn it over to Elliot Harkaby, Senior Advisor or CNA to introduce himself and talk a little bit about what his experience with integration is. My name is Elliot Harkavy. I've been the technology advisor to the Body Worn Camera Training and Technical Assistance Program for over four years now, almost four and a half. And before that, I coordinated uh, law enforcement for the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, and that was coordinating law enforcement across some 80 some odd member agencies and body one cameras was during my tenure one of the biggest issues that we were dealing with and the integration of body one cameras with other systems was a big question then and has been a big question or subject of interest since i've been involved with body one cameras definitely have seen the spectrum of what integration could entail so if we can go to the next slide perhaps the one uh, the next one okay so there's various ways that we can talk about integration. Jeff said it can go from small to big. You know, certainly some of the earliest areas of integration were integration across law enforcement agency systems. Initially, certainly integration with the CAD and the RMS system, and that can be used for tagging and for making sure that you uh, have all the video from a given call and uh, linking the video record with the investigative record in RMS. Then you have, especially with some of the newer systems, the cameras can provide situational awareness of where officers are and what they're doing. And uh, we've also heard recently of some agencies integrating body worn cameras into their real time crime centers. And there's definitely a whole wider spectrum of integration across agency systems, but these are some of the most common. Uh, there's integration with agency functions, not only training for using the BWC, but using BWC in training. And that could, uh, the, the simplest format of that is using the video from training to review the training with the trainees to give them feedback on how they're proceeding in the training. But there's also use of both exceptional actions by officers and the other end of the spectrum, the not quite so good interactions by officers to show the best and worst of experiences what to do and what not to do. And we've we've also heard of agencies taking video from body worn camera and formatting it to use in real time simulators and virtual reality systems for uh, that experiential type training. And there's certainly 
more creative uses out there that we might not be aware of. We've definitely heard of integration with special operations. Initially, body-worn cameras came out of special operations, but then for a while there were there was pushback on using it for special operations, concern about exposing tactics or other confidential information. But in recent years, it's now there's now been a return to using body one cameras in special operations and documenting what happens when things go right and unfortunately when things go wrong. And all sorts of other specialized functions, some agencies cover transit or airports or courts or schools, traffic, corrections, warrant service, court orders, code enforcement. There's a wide spectrum of integration within agency functions, integration across partners, certainly prosecutors, courts, other law enforcement agencies within your jurisdiction or neighboring jurisdictions, your mutual the the agencies you call on most often for mutual aid, and then there there's the more comprehensive view of digital evidence integration, which is now trying to create a more a comprehensive view, a full spectrum view of the evidence for a given case or set of cases or your entire caseload, and that can include the video, the audio, the fo- the photos, the computer dumps, the data, the apps, the websites, and it can, it can include integration across the systems, the functions, and the partners, as I've already discussed. With that, I'm going to uh, pass it to the chief. Thanks, Elliot, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Allen. I'm the chief of police at the Brunswick Division of Police. We're a suburb outside of Cleveland, and we got into the body-worn camera space in 2019 when we were fortunate to receive grant funding from BJA. At the time, we were kind of really in a need to catch up in video space. Not even all of our police cruisers at that time had video systems on board. I made it a project to go ahead and budget for car camera systems that then kind of led us into, well, if we're going to talk about car camera systems, we really ought to catch up and and look at the body cams. That's the course we took, evaluating a couple of different vendors. Eventually, we selected a vendor, now have car systems and body cams that integrate. So the, on the technology side of things, integration definitely is super useful with a case from start to finish, having the car camera view, which obviously is multiple views out the front in the prisoner compartment area, and then the body cam view of all officers who respond to a call. So all of that is integrated into a case that's managed in the vendor's system. So technology-wise, that's where we're at with integration. That also then led us to uh, integrating with our prosecutor's offices. That's become extremely efficient over and above what we used to experience, you know, traveling down to the prosecutor's office to take a flash drive or a disk, something of that nature. Now we're integrated to where we share the video in the cloud. So it really cuts down on processing time for records, clerics, you know, case management time with the detective bureau. So we're up and running, integrating with our county prosecutor's office for felony cases and uh, juvenile cases. And interestingly enough, really as a result of talking about this discussion session and talking about integration, I I have the goal of getting on board with our local municipal court and sharing video in the cloud. Up to this point, we had been doing it more old school, having clerks put the stuff on a flash drive and the prosecutor's office would have it that way. This has led to, you know, I talked to colleagues here in my county, most of all who are sharing at the uh, local court level electronically. So I've had some positive discussions with my local prosecutor as late as this morning talking about this topic. And he's on board with us starting to do this in the cloud. Hugely beneficial for our operation to now be able to integrate that way. And then our other integration primarily is at the operational level. As I kind of looked at various aspects of our operation, talked to different members of my staff, some of the things that Elliot referred to are things that we're doing and have found very beneficial. Uh, In the training platform, body-worn camera videos used by our FTOs regularly to um, assess and evaluate how new officers are doing in the field. It gives them that uh, point of view to kind of critique and go over maybe uh, approaches on a traffic stop or handling of a 
aggression response situation where perhaps uh, some tactics have to be used. So these things really help in the training arena. And then it also is used at the supervisory level in, in two primary areas. One, when officers involved in a vehicle pursuit, I have a supervisor who reviews that pursuit, both the car camera aspect and then the body camera aspect as to how the pursuit went, how the apprehension at the end, if, if the uh, violators apprehended, making sure that everything's done well, done within policy. The pursuit reviews video comes into hand into uh, account often. And then aggression response, which is another term for use of force. We call it aggression response. But uh, anytime an officer uses force, whether it's physical control, uh, takedowns, use of a taser, OC spray, baton, et cetera, they complete a written report of that use. And then we have a supervisor who reviews that, again, to make sure we're within policy, make sure we can cover stuff in training if there are some uh, weak areas. So the body camera video really, really has become helpful in, in those aspects of operations. It's also been a, a good community engagement tool. You know, we've shared some body cam video on our social media platforms. One that comes to mind in the last several months, a couple of officers, you know, rescued a child who was not breathing and used CPR and life-saving techniques until the medics got there. Great outcome. Some of the Cleveland area media caught on to that. We were able to share a clip of body cam video you know, in a situation where our officers did a, a fabulous life-saving effort. So it's come in handy in community engagement arenas. Uh, we use it in our citizens' policing for a number of different uh, topic areas where we can show examples of uh, our team doing the good work that they do. Uh, so body cam video has helped in community engagement stuff for sure. It's helped us integrate and work with other city departments. For example, officer goes on a welfare check for uh, maybe an uh, elderly community member who could use some assistance from county services. And you know, maybe the condition of the home is, you know, in need of attention and need of assistance. We've been able to share some video of what the officer saw when he went to the house with uh, the county office for older adults. And so you, you kind of go back to that, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, it is, and video is even that broader perspective that you can not only share a police report with somebody who reads the conditions that they observe, but now they can see a video and then you know, deploy resources to help people out in situations. Building code violations, our building department has, uh, we've shared video with them. Again, maybe a good condition of a residence or something that's unsafe and body cam video was helpful in that arena. So those are just kind of some of the highlights of, of operational level integration that we've really, really found beneficial. Thanks, Chief Olin. Sergeant Naughton and Detective Clinton. My name's Tom Naughton. I'm the supervisor uh, with the camera systems here at St. Louis County Police. Detective Mike Clinton was assigned to me originally when we kicked the body camera program off in uh, 2019. Uh, we started with all of our training and, and doing all the vehicle installs. And one of the things that we found very beneficial was to go ahead and have all the cameras installed in the vehicles prior to issuing the body cameras and doing the training with the officers. Our department is currently 895 officers strong. So you can imagine trying to train, you know, near 900 people and then six months later have all their equipment handed to them. So that's one of the things that we found with with getting the camera program kicked off and running was having the equipment up and running at the time of training was hugely beneficial for the officers. There was not a lot of time down where, you know, they had a lot of time to forget all of their training and that. Some of the unique things that we've done on top of what the chiefs already discussed, our department's done a lot of the same things that, that they've done uh, as far as our integration and, and unique ways to uh, push the camera program out and, and utilize all the features of it. We sat down with each group about six months into the body cameras being deployed. Each unique aid, uh, group within our agency, such as our SWAT team, our tactical operations guys, and asked them what would they like to see the camera be able to do that it doesn't do? How is it working with them uh, in their day-to-day -day job? Is it hindering them? Is it in their way? Is there better locations? So Mike and I have worked tirelessly in the first year trying to uh, make all of the system work better. These guys really you know, grasp the concept of now you're wearing a body camera, you're going to have to use it. 
Uh, how can we make it better for you? So we worked with a lot of different vendors developing different things such as mounts and stuff for our robots, different uniform alterations that could, could be tailored specifically for uh, SWAT use uh, where it didn't get in the way of rifle slings, all the other things on their outer carriers and that. We're, we're still constantly evolving. We're two and a half years into this and we're still integrating other systems. We're looking at exploring different options with, I'll let Mike touch base on a little bit more of the other technologies we're, we're pushing because he's kind of leading that. But we've been working a lot with our vendor on further developing the product that they already have, the ALPR systems. We're testing four on our cars right now and they're integrated with the actual body cam system. So we're able to watch from one single platform. We can gather all the ALPR data. We can watch live streams of the actual LPR cameras, which is pretty cool, as well as uh, the car camera and the body cameras at any given time. Those were all things that we've been kind of working on here. Do I One of the things that uh, Elliot mentioned was integrating with a real-time crime center. So for our, our version of that is the Regional Intelligence and Information Center. And one of the concerns of having ALPRs on our vehicles is, well, what happens when the officer's not in the car, but it's still collecting data? You know, who's getting that hit? Who's answering that? Who's responsible for that? And that was one of the things we decided to push our vendor to assist us with is we need to integrate with what we use in our real-time intelligence center and give them the hits as well. So in addition to having it at the body camera and car camera level, we're able to get real-time hits to them as well so we they know the officer's not in that vehicle they can simply look at the map and say hey i know where he's at i know where that hit is and i can dispatch that out to the other cars in the area as well and at the same time one of the expansions that we wanted to do with the program internally to our vendor is also geographically send that hit out to cars within that area as well that's just one of the things we found really extremely beneficial is just feeding real-time intelligence as quickly and as efficiently as possible to cars that might not be equipped with it, detective units who aren't equipped with body cameras quite yet. And that gives them the heads up of, hey, this is coming your way. This is what the car looks like. Here's the picture of it. Here's what it's wanted for. And they're able to verify information a lot quicker than in prior times. Um, I, we've had some great success with the ALPR side of things. Another instance is um, we integrated with our CAD system. It was a dated system, but we were able to work with Two, two separate vendors to get them to communicate very well and efficiently and make what we had and what we could afford at the time work greatly to our benefit. In the previous session I, I overheard, they were talking about the metadata and how important that is and integrating with our CAD, our CAD's already integrated with our proprietary RMS system. We have our own in-house programmers here at our department. Not a lot of agencies can afford that or have the ability to do that. And since the CAD's already integrated at that level, it made the seamless integration to the body cameras just through the CAD get all that extra benefit that's already there. So if the officer does fail to put in, you know, the metadata that we would like them to put in, it's not falling to the wayside because the CAD has already grabbed that information for the most part and has applied that to the video automatically. It allows us to search that stuff up very quickly to answer uh, Sunshine uh, or FOIA requests, as some might know it as and it helps detectives find their videos too. They can simply look at a call for service number, just put that in and it's gonna pull back everything that was associated with that one number and not rely on the report number or maybe they classified it differently than another officer and things like that. In addition to that, with our special operations, um, he, he, we touched on it, putting it on a robot. We've also asked, hey, what would you like to know from a command perspective? And they're like, well, I would like to see what they're telling me over the radio so I can better give them resources or what they need while they're eating, ready to make entry into a house and simply grabbing a bicycle mount, putting a body camera on a robot and live streaming that back to a command post, which can be anywhere from several hundred feet away to on the other side of the county. Or in some instances, if they're out traveling the country, we're able to still get that to them outside of St. Louis County into wherever they're at in the world, as long as they have an internet connection. So integrating that everything's web-based. Here's some pictures of that. In addition to uh, the ALPR cameras that are on the front of the vehicles, we're expanding that program as well. Further expanding this, this program here with the LPR system, and as Mike said, integrating it with our other systems that we'll be able to hit on the real-time uh, data that's coming through. That's all in the works for us and part of our expansion of our, our real-time crime center that's, that's currently being built out. And as he 
to the next slide. In our area, we have a very unique agency as well as a county and region. Within St. Louis County, there are just under 100 municipalities that exist. And within that county, there are approximately 50 police departments, along with other surrounding counties that have their own level of uh, municipal governments and their own police departments. And so what we were able to do is any agency that uses our same platform, we're able to integrate with their platform and we can see them real time where their cars are at, where their officers are at with their body cameras. A lot of times crime here is uh, interconnected and it helps us quickly and swiftly get that information to those agencies if we have footage of it, as well as any critical incident that does occur, such as an active shooter or anything like that. We've had several instances in this area where the agencies and the commanders are able to pull up the map say, hey, I see St. Louis County's taking the south side of this mall. You, my guys go to the north side because I can see the other two agencies that have the system that are responding as well have taken the east and the west side. And now we've effectively set up our own containment without ever having to get on the radio. They just simply look at the map and they can see where everybody's at and where our resources are at. Also with the interagency agreements that we have, we're able to set up, we have geofencing set up for the adjacent county. We've split St. Louis County in North and South to include St. Louis City. All uh, our adjoining county there is St. Charles. If you look on the picture, it's off to the, the, the one that kind of goes off to the side there. That's a very large county and we have that all geofenced out too. So if there was an incident say happen uh, in our municipal partner of Bridgeton, who has a bridge that connects directly into St. Charles County. They have the ability to jump on to the geofence and send a mass message to every car in that area specific to what they're dealing with. It could be anything from, you know, a missing child or Alzheimer's patient to an assault that just occurred on law enforcement. They can take the video and the footage from the, the vehicle and put the real uh, suspect vehicle out there in just a matter of seconds, it hits everybody camera every car camera in the area. So it's another thing that we've been working with with doing. There are several more municipalities, as Mike said, there's, there's close to 52, I think, separate police departments here in St. Louis County. And we're just now starting to pick up dispatch services for some of these other vendors too. I'm not, sorry, not vendors, but the municipalities. So the ones that are on our system uh, that we're utilizing, the vendor is going to be working a little bit. They're doing an enhancement now where, say, a municipal officer, their body worn indicates that they're, they're down uh, in a prone position. It will send out an alert to not just that agency, but anyone else that's on the platform here. It'll get an automatic alert to where the officer is, who the officer is, and they're able to and then use GPS directions to get turn-by-turn -turn directions to where where that officer would, would be located at. Yeah, there's slide. another slide, here we go. When we started talking a little bit about unique ways to use the system and, and do uh, operational integration here, um, you can see in the background of the larger picture here, that is a, a Ford F-150 that's been outfitted with that screen that's a 50 inch RV rated TV with a portable stand. And then inside that, that becomes a mobile command post for viewing. So it's a 10 by 20 curtain tent that keeps the video streams that we're doing from prying eyes, say media is nearby or family members are nearby or, or whatever. It gives us privacy to be able to live stream on that 50 inch screen what's going on. The gentleman pictured in here is the scene commander. He's looking at, it's kind of whited out on there, but he's actually can see where all the officers are on the mapping. And the screen just to the side of that is the live stream of the robot. So he's on the phone talking to other people that are there on the scene, and he can see in real time, being at least uh, about a half mile away, he can see what's going on and be able to report it accurately. And the other side of the screen there, those are the LPR cameras that we're currently utilizing through the vendor. And there's a screenshot there of what the officers would see inside the car. The enhancement that we're doing, the real-time crime center, is that they'll get that information too, as Mike said. Uh, and be able to do more investigative research into that actual plate and the and the hit that came on it while the officers are responding to it. They're sitting at a desk in the real-time crime center. They're able to start running things and do, do uh, some more record checks and digging before dispatching any more cars out. And one thing that is great, if you notice that's not a laptop that that hit is coming to, most ALPR systems that exist and that we've had experience with, and I've had my own patrol car as well, it uses the computer that's in that car and you cannot use another computer outside of that. Our agency, we're very fortunate that everybody in the Division of Patrol and Special Operations has their own computer. 
and they just take that if they don't have their own personal car they then have a pool car that they'll sign out but they get their computer it has all their stuff on it that they need and want and all their quick tabs and things like that before on these other systems it locks down that computer to that car only sometimes it doesn't get updated sometimes it just doesn't work right with this we've taken that completely off of our computer it doesn't use up any of our RAM, any of our, you know, we don't have to have more powerful computers to be able to run all the processing. It goes through the cloud and through the in-car camera system. And that way they've got a complete separate screen. They can then look at that screen and put that information into our Siegis systems and verify that that is a valid hit. Or as you see, there's a report is invalid and they're able to take care of that. Great. Thank you. I'm going to try to dive in a little bit on a couple of things that all of you have talked about so far, but I want to remind everybody, if you've got any specific questions, things like that, please post them in the chat, send them to our one of our hosts uh, so that we can address those as well. Both Chief Olin and Sergeant Naughton and Detective Clinton, you both talked about, and Elliot spoke of it as well. When you talked about, and it, it, I want to try to tie these two things together so you can expand either direction you want to go. But so for Brunswick, you know, and you're kind of like a, outskirts of Cleveland. So you've got multiple agencies, things like that, that you're dealing with. And obviously St. Louis County, large county, lots of agencies, but most, both of you probably share similar aspects as far as like a prosecutor's office, things like that. And Chief Olin, I know you talked about your experience with them and how things are going pretty good with them, but how would you say the initial or after you started going with BWCs and maybe integrations of other systems, but when you started giving that or trying to work with all those details with either them or surrounding agencies with trying to figure out, do we either have the same systems? Do we have different systems? Is there a way to integrate? Things like that. If you could speak maybe a little more specifically about that process. And like I said, that could have been towards the beginning of all this too. And Chief Olin, I'd like to start with you and hopefully that question makes sense. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. When we were going through our selection process and uh, picked a vendor for our camera systems, part of our review was to try to find a common platform that agencies in our area were using with the thought not only to get their you know, experience with that particular product, but you know, with the possibility of future integration and sharing of data and sharing of video that uh, maybe we have cases that cross jurisdictional lines. So the product that we're using uh, in our in my agency here, the county sheriff's office and the city just to our south are using the same product. And when I spoke with the city prosecutor this morning, it was interesting uh, that he shared, you know, he's got his signing credentials for the platform where video is uploaded for the sheriff, one city and one township agency all of which are using the same municipal court. And he said to me, when I sign in, I can see chronologically when these videos are uploaded for various cases. And just through that conversation learning, well, hey, listen, Matt, we have the same vendor. So I'll get our IT staff to work with the municipal court IT staff, and we can have our video integrated into that same dashboard, if you will so that you can look at video related to cases that might be involving multiple agencies. So just those efficiencies are gonna be a, a great outcome from this conversation we had this morning. I can also say that in our experience since, and this is, I get this feedback from the prosecutors, both county and city prosecutors, with having body cam video and car cam video associated with cases, they're resolving cases a lot more readily and efficiently than without video. Because, you know, if my staff prepares video case to share with a defense attorney after there's a request for discovery, the defense attorney reviews that video and usually that results in a discussion with the prosecutor and they're coming up with an agreement. And so it's more efficiently taking care of the case before we've got to send officers down to testify in court. So there's been some great efficiencies that we've seen by using the video. And now that we're uh, identified, we're on a common platform and the prosecutor can get into that, look at that evidence as they review cases. 
uh, it's going to uh, increase the efficiency that much more. Thanks, Chief. Sergeant Naughton, Detective Clinton. So working with our prosecutor's office, obviously we have several municipal agencies or municipalities that we also contract for. So they have a different court system as well as prosecutor. We have our state level, then we have our federal level, and then we have our adjoining counties that we, since crime is so interconnected that we've forged partnerships with uh, to get them the footage. Getting them to go cloud-based and get them to go completely digital, it's been a process and it's looking a lot better now especially as more agencies are start coming on board with body cameras in the region. Everyone's wanting to get rid of these disks and these USB drives. And a lot of places are locking down their computers to not allow USB drives to even be plugged in. So that's a lot more beneficial to us, especially being a two-man show for as long as we've been running this entire program, uh, as well as the sun sunshine request portion of this. I mean, getting it to the prosecutor's offices, uh, going digital would save us an immense amount of time and uh, getting them everything in one nice package, anywhere from outside video, this as well. Part of the update to the system that's coming here soon is we're going to be able to upload security camera footage, Faro scans from uh, crime scenes, where we tip digital images in a 3D scan. They'll be able to take all that, put it into one case file. They'll immediately have access to all the body-worn camera, car camera footage, and any other digital media evidence right then and there. And they can organize it how they wish and then get it to the defense attorneys uh, through discovery uh, a lot more efficiently than having like five different USB drives of consisting of, you know, gigs and gigs of data. As we found out in several of our critical incidents, you know, we've handed them 128 gig flash drive and we're like, well, so this is just day one. You know, part of this occurred on day two and here's another, you know, three more flash drives. So and that didn't include other agencies that responded to assist. Uh, so getting rid of the physical copies of this stuff is something that we're continuing to work with our, our other agencies with. I know the AUSA's office has uh, been very helpful with uh, sharing things uh, electronically as well recently. Yeah, we use for our, uh, in, in Missouri here, it's a sunshine request, but the FOIA request, our agency uses a third-party vendor that allows us to share everything electronically. And that has actually been probably the biggest time saver for me as the is, is the main person that has to produce the video. So I'm looking forward to getting our prosecutor's office fully on board. We do have the ability to share links of the video directly to them now. And we have done it on a case-by-case -case basis where time might be of the essence. Um, I'm not able to get a hard copy to them as fast as I can a digital copy. So I will send that to them and they're still requesting hard copies to, to follow up later. That is uh, one of the big things that we're working on trying to get is everyone on board with uh, with that. And as Mike mentioned, having so many municipalities with their own prosecutors here, that's going to be a huge challenge. And we're looking forward to pushing it forward and, and hopefully within the next year or so that whole integration will be done. Thanks. Elliot, any thoughts, uh, additional comments on this topic? Well, one of the things that uh, I heard one of the gubernatorial candidates in my state say this morning was he wasn't good at he 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 wasn't he became a lawyer because he wasn't good at math and science and you can extend technology out of that and I, in fact I've heard my brother who's a lawyer say the same thing so one of the things to understand is that in many cases the the district attorney's office or the prosecuting attorney's office may be a little technology adverse and that's often why they might be reluctant to accept the links rather than the media that they've become used to. And there's the perception that, hey, I have a physical media, I can control this better than a link. But what's interesting is I just read a story from another country where the defense bar is complaining about the district attorney passing links from the body one camera system because it's tracking who who sees that link and where that link is being passed on to so it the link it actually may be more secure because you hand the the defense attorney a copy of that media on media you don't know who that defense attorney is going to pass it on to but perhaps the most convincing case for using the links is the economic cost as our colleagues from uh, St. Louis County just said there's a lot of time and effort in burning that media and a lot of cost for the media as well those can be used. And the, the other interesting thing that I'm seeing out there is that the big driver right now for digital evidence integration systems 
are the uh, prosecuting attorneys uh, offices. They're the ones asking for systems that can integrate across, integrate video across multiple systems because they're getting multiple feeds. If not everyone in their jurisdiction is using the same system, then they need something that will integrate the multiple feeds. And that's actually driving some of the third party digital evidence integration, as well as the, the body one cameras vendors moves into the digital evidence integration space. That is what one of their headaches is the feeds from multiple systems. Just some things to think about, but working with your prosecutor and being able to easily feed them what they need and make sure that you're feeding them everything that they need since a case can be kicked if not all the evidence is turned over in discovery are essential functions in a body one camera program. Thanks, Elliot. I'm looking at the time. So if there are any questions specifically that you want to ask any of us, please fire those away because I think we got what, about seven minutes left. I certainly have a lot that we're not going to get to today, but let me let me kind of go with something maybe simple, but maybe hard at the same time, but it's going to be an easy question. What would you say if you had to answer with one answer, what has been or what has been what is its biggest benefit or most beneficial one piece? of your specific integration. So even though it might be multiple different integrations across different platforms, or it could be something more simple, what would you say is the most big, either brings you the biggest benefit or has been the most beneficial to you? Chief, I'm gonna start with you again. I don't know if I can uh, boil it down to one word, but the, the word that I've, I've used numerous times is efficiency. I, I just think we're always being pushed by our fiscal leaders to do quote more with less. And you know, we're all challenged these days with recruiting and retention, uh, keeping our, our ranks staffed. And so the the technology uh, efficiencies that body one cameras bring, I think is a force multiplier. Thanks, Chief. St. Louis County. You guys have a sidebar to decide on this one, or are we going to go with two different answers? Well, I think the biggest, most beneficial integration that we've done is uh, CAD. Um, our CAD integration has really simplified the, the use of this camera. We have automatic recordings based on proximity to the call. So that takes that completely away from the officer to have to remember to initiate recordings uh, when they, you know, otherwise would like have to, uh, we, we've got our perimeter set up to a thousand foot entry within a call location by GPS coordinates. So uh, before they even get close to the call, their cameras are already kicking on and they're they're ready to go. So they don't have to worry about it popping out onto a hot scene. They don't have to worry about, you know, is my camera on or is it not on? So CAD integration, I think has been probably the most beneficial thing that we've done. Excellent, thanks. Detective Clinton, you agree with that? Yeah, so 100%. Um, the okay. CAD integration is the best thing that we did. <laughs> like I said, I know we're running low on time, but I, I see a question in here, and it, it's actually, it's a great question that I think we get a lot when it comes to CAD integration. So I'm going to let whoever wants to chime in on this one. I'll read it. It says, we utilize CAD integration, but errors regarding evidence categorization occur. For example, sometimes the wrong call would be applied to specific evidence et cetera, through the integration. Do other agencies encounter this issue? What steps were taken to improve accuracy? Additionally, do your officers have to do any manual work to categorize evidence or are they reliant on the on such integration systems? I'll field this one since about two years ago, I did a webinar that's on the bwctta.com website on uh, the CAD integration. We had uh, a few different agencies on there. And if you're doing the direct system to system integration, you're going to get about an 80% match hit or accurate match hit, which means that 20% will be either not matched or mismatched. But what we're hearing from a number of agencies is that there are iterative processes to refine that. And if you take the time to, to make those refinements, and a lot of it is adjusting on both sides, the CAD and the, and the BWC side, uh, you can get to the high 90s in terms of match rate. But it takes time, it takes effort, it takes a lot of fine tuning, but it, it, it is achievable. But let's, let's face it, 80% match rate is better 
than the officers having to go into every single call, every single video and put in all the call information. But 90, not, you know, 98% is certainly better than 80%. It's yeah. just, it is an iterative process to fine tune it because you have two different systems that weren't designed to work together that you're trying to make work together. Thanks, Elliot. What about St. Louis County? You guys chime in on that a little bit? Yeah, so our CAD integration, uh, it, it pretty much captures, just like Elliot said, about 80% accuracy all the time. What we rely on and what we've actually found is in areas where there's a uh, larger number of officers present, you'll get some of those errors. You'll get the proximity readings. If they call out on something before the CAD uh, information is attached to it, that call sometimes can be linked to a neighboring call because the CAD wasn't there when the initial recording started. The only way that we found to really rectify that is having the officers put the report numbers in because we have a report number screen uh, field or the CFS number uh, if it doesn't exist on the CAD or if it's inaccurate, they're supposed to review that when they're classifying their videos anyway. So when officers do that, seamless, it's not, it's not a problem at all. We get everything that we need, but there are instances like, like spoken earlier that sometimes a CAD does pick up the neighboring call versus the one you're actually on. Excellent. Thank you. And do we have any other questions that I can't see anywhere, Eliana or Brittany? Because I see we're at about that time. Nope. I don't see any other questions in the chat. All right. Chip, anything you want to chime in with before we run completely out of time here? Any question you have burning? I do not have a burning question. I just appreciate, you know, all the topics that were covered and the, you know, the excellence of uh, our presenters here. So I'm fine. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Thanks. Well, it is 3.50 according to my clock, which means that we're at the closing session portion. So I don't want to hold anybody up. I want to say thank you to everyone for participating, our panelists, wealth of information. And I know in speaking to all of you, St. Louis County, Brunswick, Elliott, you know, anything that anybody wants or has any questions, things like that, I know that you've all kind of offered to help out or, you know, be there for information and Really appreciate that. And as you all know, it's really nice when one agency can turn to others or other people to try to either get some help or further information. So again, thank you all for participating. Thanks for listening. And um, with that, I'll turn it back over to the host. Thanks, Chef. Thanks, everybody. Again, we will start closing comments here in about 10 minutes. I know the other session is just ending. Just give us a few minutes and everyone will come back together. Thank you.